Hello and welcome to the Farmers Union pregame show. As always, I'm Ken Oda, Noah Grant alongside Toros, coming in winners of nine in a row. Yeah, pretty incredible, obviously. The fact that you're thinking about getting to double digits on a win streak. Um, you know, I'd like to ask a stats guy or two. I don't know if we do have any information. I wonder what the longest Toros winning streak is. Nine is actually the 2014-15 uh, season. The Toros won nine in a row that year between, uh, I believe, October and late November. So Toros looking to re rewrite the record book uh, in many ways this week. Yeah, many ways, like you mentioned, obviously win number 10, potentially on the docket tonight. Trevor Stahoyak, next point will be 102, which would give him sole possession of the all-time points lead in and franchise history. And, uh, you know, we talk about offense, but usually we don't expect it from the back end, Ken. No, Colby Volk, a 11th goal, came last weekend in St. Cloud in the Toro sweep of the Norsemen in St. Cloud. His next one would be 12, which would be a franchise record for single season uh, goals by a defenseman. So really tonight can potentially just rip up the Toro record book and rewrite the whole thing. I was going to say, can we point out we're in game 34 of the season? Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty incredible. Yeah, Kobe off to a huge start. And what's, what's amazing about it to me is you look at his numbers, one goal last year, none the year before. Mm -hmm. He only had one goal coming into November. Yeah, and we talked about it too, uh, and a guy that you might highlight in a little bit, in fact, I know you're going to, but a guy like Weston Knox, who is on the other side of things, who really is offensive-minded, pushes the pace, he only had two at the end of the calendar year, right? So it's kind of weird the way that some of those things work out where guys you maybe don't expect are contributing, but that's kind of been the storyline for this team this year is, yes, you've got the guys that are supposed to produce doing their job and staying above water or better, so to speak, production-wise, but then you've got guys that seemingly, quote-unquote, came out of nowhere. But for a guy who's in his third year, brings a lot of that veteran leadership, I suppose maybe we really shouldn't be surprised at that point that he's someone that you know was maybe able to open up his offensive game for someone who was originally so defensive-minded. And I alluded to it already, but the Toros do come in off of a sweep of St. Cloud last weekend, so a rematch weekend here. 7-1 on Friday night, and then 6-3 on Saturday. A couple of dominant performances for the Toros. Yeah, certainly was. They really left nothing to chance. And uh, a bit, uh, actually going to go into one of my keys to the game, but a bit uncharacteristic for this Toros team, especially against St. Cloud. This group, for as good as they've been this season with 53 points on the year in the standings, they, they've not been a team that's been winning 7-1, 5-0. We've talked about that. They've had a few here and there, but they've been in a lot of close hockey games and they've gotten the job done. So maybe, uh, at least for you and the blood pressure meds, a little bit more even keel for the weekend. Yeah, it was a little bit easier. I, the one odd thing about the game, both nights, the Norsemen scored first, which yeah. to then have those games turn into lopsided affairs the other way is perhaps a little less common. But uh, other than that, not much to really pick on the Toros about for last weekend giving up the first goal, but then putting up 13 the rest of the weekend, it, it's hard to really find fault. Well, the disparity, I mean, uh, if you look at the Noodles numbers, uh, it, it's something that I guess makes sense on paper, so yeah. to speak, right? The Toros 3.52 goals for per game, that's 116 for them this season. They've only given up 68 on the opposite side, 2.06 goals against, a full point, a goal and a half, which if you're talking stats, if you don't know anything about hockey stats, that's a huge margin. Yeah. And then on the other side, I mean, uh, 92 goals for, 96 goals against for St. Cloud, sitting right around 2.7, 2.8. So St. Cloud is not a bad hockey team, about 500, about as even keel as you can get. They've snuck in a couple of games you know, beyond regulation where they've at least gotten a point and a loss. But the Toros, you can see the disparity where, you know, they might not have an otherworldly goal production, so to speak. 116 is pretty good, but they don't give up a whole lot. No, Toros haven't given up a whole lot of late well really all season long and you look at those St. Cloud numbers 2.7 goals for 2.8 goals against that tells you a team that typically plays close games and mm -hmm. so does their nine overtime losses right two overtime seven shootout losses they're a team that is very good at finding a way to get at least a point most nights and unfortunately maybe 0 for 2 in overtime 0 for 7 in the shootout tells you that maybe as a group, they don't have a lot of guys with the individual skill when the ice opens up for three on three and when it gets to a shootout. But uh, 
you know, they've been getting their wins by, by working hard. And we saw that uh, a hard-working physical team, even though the Toros got the sweep last weekend. Yeah, absolutely. And the real interesting key is the disparity in special teams. Both teams very good on the penalty kill, first and fourth in the NAHL, respectively. The Toros middling in the power play. We talked about their slow start. They're 13th in the league, 31st out of 32 teams for St. Cloud, though, offensively. Maybe something that uh, maybe alludes to the fact that they're now, after a tough weekend for them, dropping from second to fourth in the division. That tells you how bunched it up it is behind the Toros. Let's look at the Central Division standings brought to you by the Toros, Tribune Toros. First place, 13 points ahead of the Bobcats, 53 points for the Toros, but like I said, bunched up afterwards, just four points between second place Bismarck and fifth place Aberdeen. So as the Toros start to pull away, it's going to be a, a race to the finish line for the, the next four teams in the standings with one of them ending up on the outside looking in. Yeah, obviously Aberdeen is just trying to stay pat and tread water right now after kind of a rocky middle portion of the early start of the season. Really, it's going to come down to can Austin get back to semi themselves, basically, and can St. Cloud start winning games in regulation uh, or just winning games, I guess, and not having these finishes that are, you know, in overtime. It's not going to hurt them, but they're not getting that extra point. They're not getting a couple of those extra victories in the extra session. Hopefully that trend doesn't start tonight again. That'll bring us to the Toros Tribune Live players to watch. And you alluded to it earlier. Weston Knox is my player to watch tonight. He has been on a different level since the Toros have come back from break. You know, we talked about it, that New Year's Eve game down in Bismarck was the Weston Knox game. Yep. He continued that play down uh, in St. Cloud last weekend, carried the puck well, playing a 200-foot game. Sometimes, literally, you find him behind the net in the offensive zone on the forecheck. So <laughs> Knoxie was all over the place not even when he's getting those aggressive offensive chances, wasn't giving up anything the other way either. Yeah, he's like Kobe Brault right now behind the camera. He just never stopped moving all night, right? I mean, it's he, he was very good. And we alluded to it actually in the Toros Tribune Digital Magazine is that's the goal that I picked in Bismarck. He just turned the game on its head, ended up being the game winner that night. Uh, for me, on the other side, it's a guy who quietly has been really good. Jack O'Hannison, eight goals, eight assists, 16 points in his last 11 games. And I think he kind of flies under the radar with all the extra production from other guys that's been going on. I don't think Cody Campbell and company are going to fret too much if a guy with 16 points in his last 11 is undernamed, so to speak. No, and I think part of that is to do with how consistent he's been all season long, right? He had already been on a point per game pace. So when he goes up to 16 points and 11, it doesn't necessarily feel like, oh, wow, he's really putting up a ton of points because he was already putting up, you know, in the 11 games before that, I, I haven't looked, but I'm, I would guess probably about 10 or 11 points yeah. in, the, in the 11 games before that. So it doesn't feel like a huge increase, but really, I, ohannison has been fantastic all year long. Yeah, certainly. He's uh, 36 points for him on the season. Very good for him, as always. Uh, home key group keys to the game, Ken, I think all started off this time. Uh, keep the gravy train rolling. We talked about it. Might not before. Only two regulation goals against these St. Cloud Norsemen coming into last weekend. Both of those, uh, the one nothing and then 2-1 finish, of course, with the shootout, so to speak. But they had 13 last weekend. That's a bit of a stark contrast, but I think you'll take it. Yeah, you look at how well this team's been clicking. I, obviously, North Iowa is what North Iowa is this year. The Toros put up some big numbers right before break, but then the sweep of the Bobcats coming out of break with, with some good offense there as well. And now 13 goals in two games last weekend. If you can stay hot, stay hot for sure. And you know, it's not just the team that's been going, but it's been the Toro crowds have been really strong of late. And tonight with the North Star uh, Credit Union Thunderstick giveaway. Mm -hmm. Let's get the crowd going early. Let's hear some noise. Let's let's get this group into it. Yeah. St. Cloud, their their crowds are up for sure. We I was impressed by what we saw this weekend when we were out there. It was probably the most full I've seen that building. Mm -hmm. But it's still not 2,000 people like the Mesa Arena. There were maybe three to 400 there in St. Cloud last weekend. You know, let's take advantage of that. The Norsemen not used to playing in maybe environments like we'll have here tonight. Let's, uh, let's make it as intimidating as possible. Yeah, you know your St. Cloud and beyond history. Well, my combo pick here, know your opponent. Third game in a row between these teams. Both teams, solid penalty kill groupings. The Toros maybe have a bit of an advantage on the power play. But yeah, you have to know your opponent, stay disciplined, continue to do what works, obviously, uh, and make sure that you understand that this game could get chippy. Third game in a row, you never really know what can happen. But on top of that, just got to make sure that you're doing the right thing. 
Let's uh, quickly get through our Four Bears Casino and Lodge over-unders McDonald's Toros trivia. You can play these in the Toros Hockey mobile app. Play along, take out your phone right now, see if you can't win some prizes. Noah, I'll let you play along. Toros shots on goal tonight, 30.5. Over. Toros goals allowed. Ooh, that's a tough one. I got it at 2.5. Yeah, that's a that's a nasty line, honestly. Uh, I'm going to go with under. I think statistically the Toros have been at that mark. If it's three, I wouldn't necessarily be surprised, but that's, I, hey, you're a good bookie. That's that's <laughs> a very good choice. And tonight, we were already at almost 1,900 tickets sold before the box office opened up this morning, so total attendance, 2,000. Do I need, even need to answer that one? <laughs> <laughs> That'll bring us to our McDonald's Toros trivia question. A.J. Ruskowski set the Toro record for fewest saves in a shutout for the Toros. He did that against St. Cloud. How many saves did he have to make that evening? 12, 14, 16, or 18? I know the answer, so I'm not going to answer. All right, so does Kobe behind the camera. Fans couldn't see that, however. So that'll do it for the Farmers Union pregame show. We'll turn it over to Kobe Brault on the PA for tonight's introductions. <laughs>